in our continuing series on the Internet of Things, <laughs> we're talking about 433 megahertz and the terror at 433 megahertz and how you can build your own bridge that will integrate directly with Home Assistant or other IoT gateways that you may be working with. And uh, there isn't anything on the market that's not complete garbage. So you got to DIY it, and that's why you're here. The level one KVMs, I have a feeling it's going to be level one home automation kit with things that don't completely suck. I mean, am I right or am I am I right? Is it is that foreshadowing? We're taking a look at another Sonoff product the wireless 433 megahertz bridge. Now there's two important things you need to know. There's other level one content about general wireless devices and software defined radio. Ryan did an excellent, excellent video you should definitely check out on using software defined radio to pick up and do stuff with all of these sensors. That is drinking from the fire hose. That will let you do darn near pretty much anything that you need to do. The problem is that it's it's not in a sexy little package that you can make use of immediately for your Internet of Things devices. Well, enter Sonoff. Now, Sonoff has their own devices that operate at 433 megahertz. The problem is that you don't necessarily only want to use devices at 433 megahertz. You see, the reason 433 megahertz is popular is because the FCC doesn't really require licensing, but there are certain rules that you have to follow if you're gonna use the 433 megahertz band. For one, when you transmit, you can only transmit for a very, very, very short period of time because the FCC figures that there's gonna be a whole bunch of devices that operate on this band, so your, you know, your, your blips can only last a few milliseconds out of every second and there are power limits and that kind of thing you know the receiver can be pretty powerful so it can pick up a weak transmitter but if you need two-way communication or transmit or anything like that a little bit of a problem the type of sensors that operate at 433 megahertz are typically home alarm system sensors so just like Ryan covered he was doing home and uh, a home door and window sensors and things like that you know that's an option but you know, Sonoff makes a lot of 433 megahertz sensors that you can use for all kinds of other things there are you know basement flood alarms so if you get a little bit of water in your basement you can get a notice through your alarm system and you don't have to run pesky wires the problem is plugging that into your other automation systems and that's what this little puck does but not with the default firmware the default firmware only works with Sonoff devices that's not acceptable we need to fix that enter Tasmoda yeah, just like their wireless control system switches where we modified switches to turn them into our own Internet of Things thing and we set them up to subscribe their events to uh, the Mosquito Broker running on Home Assistant, then yeah, you can do that. Now, if I just started speaking some crazy foreign moon language, we've actually done five or six videos on the Internet of Things, starting with the, uh, the Iron Fireman and repurposing the Iron Fireman's uh, thermostat for our modern home control system and I'm, I'm sort of assuming that you're to, to a point where you have home assistant or you know something like that that is ready to receive events from these IOT devices and you may even have a separate IOT network I've covered all of that in past videos and so if you're interested in doing that watch those videos they'll get you up to speed where you can continue on from here I'll wait so because the Sonoff 433 megahertz wireless bridge only works with Sonoff devices out of the box, we need to put new firmware on it. But it's not just new firmware on the controller, which is of course the ESP8266 uh, that we, we've all come to know and love, but also the radio, because the radio firmware by default really only works with the devices that Sonoff makes, and we can change the radio to listen for darn near everything. So in order to do that, we've got to follow the guide. Now there, it turns out there's a couple of different versions of this puck from Sonoff. I've got the, the V2 version. And for my initial modification, it wasn't necessary to modify the PCB because I'm actually running it off the programmer. So they do actually break out headers here internally. You can take it apart and run through it and remove some foam and carefully bend the, uh, the, the light thing up out of the way. There's a switch here that you can slide over to put it in programming mode. And then there are three sets of pin headers that are useful for interfacing uh, both the wireless microcontroller as well as the radio, which is used for the you know the radio part of the microcontroller, and flashing those are two separate operations. 
Now, flashing the initial Tasmoda on this, you're gonna need a programmer. I'm using a simple FTDI programmer and I'm programming it from Linux, no big deal. I've covered that in other videos. If you really need help with that, check out the Sonoff video for reflashing the outlet controller instead of this one. The process is largely the same. And in fact, the firmware image is the same as well. Once you get the firmware set up, you actually pick this thing in a drop-down menu. So yeah, yeah, Tasmoda is so universal that you just flash the same thing. And then in the web GUI that Tasmoda provides you, you say, oh no, this is a wireless bridge. This is a 433 megahertz wireless bridge. Now, there are general purpose IO pins here that you can repurpose for other things. That's an advanced, that's a 200 level thing. Let's not worry about that for right now. Uh, if you do plan to flash the radio in this thing, uh, from a from like normal operation mode, then I would suggest that you cut a couple of traces on the motherboard. That's also outlined in the guide in the how-to. It's a how-to that level one didn't have to write, thank goodness. So there's a link to it here. Uh, and what that does is it disconnects the general purpose IO pins from the USB pins. I'm not sure why exactly, but they uh, connected the USB pins to the general purpose IO pins, which means that if it's powered by USB data, that will interfere with flashing the radio firmware. And so with Tasmoda on this thing, we can use Tasmoda to actually flash the radio firmware. That's key. The documentation doesn't really super explain that that's what's going on, but the radio firmware and the radio controller is a separate controller from the controller that Tasmoda is running on. They talk to each other over a link, but it turns out Tasmoda can be used to actually flash the other microcontroller that's in the little Sonoff 433 megahertz puck, and then you're off to the races, you're good to go. Now there's actually several different radio firmwares that will run on this thing, but only a couple of them are getting active developer attention. So I would definitely flash the one that is recommended by the guide, double check the guide at the time that you're doing this to make sure that you know what I'm showing you on screen is actually still relevant, because that might change, but that's basically the other sort of part two of this. Now, I also machined out my, my own slot in this, and I went ahead and cut the traces to make it a little easier to reflash this thing in the future. So basically I just used some, some circuit grabbers. You get one of these with the logic analyzer or bus protocol analyzer. They're like tweezers that can actually just grab onto uh, the holes or traces or pins that you have sticking up pretty much anything. They make it super easy to reflash these devices. They make it super easy to do debugging and that kind of thing. Uh, there are a few bucks on eBay if you want to pick up one of those, you know, sets of probes, not really a big deal. Makes your life easier. And then of course the FTDI flasher here is well, it's like five bucks. It's a pretty easy uh, thing to do. It's a pretty easy process. I set up mine to provide 3.3 volts. You won't want to give it five volts. You'll murder it. And so if you've already set it to five volts and you're, I'm just not getting to that. I'm sorry. It was 3.3. You've, uh, uh, your your prize is that you now have a, a dead whatever. Uh, you'll have to order another one, I'm sorry. But there you go. This thing now, with the updated radio firmware, can hear pretty much anything at 433 megahertz. You can actually log into the web GUI, and it gives you a console to type commands in. So if you have a, a uh, an alarm motion sensor, you can go wave your arms and then come back and say, hey, did you see that event? And if you did, you can subscribe to events from that and actually forward those on to Home Assistant. Now this only supports remembering, I think, about eight devices. That will vary a little bit with hardware and some other parameters. And you may be able to squeeze some more out of it depending on how uh, willing to get your hands dirty that you are. But eight wireless devices per puck that it can listen for and then forward the events to Home Assistant, I'm fine with that. That's, that's basically okay. I'm good with that. This has been a quick look at flashing the Tasmoda 433 megahertz wireless bridge. If you already have an alarm in your home that you're not using and you want to use it for non-alarm things, you totally can. Now me personally, as I explained in the video a couple of videos ago, I actually just augmented my home alarm panel. So my alarm panel passes through to Home Assistant. So I don't need to do something like this. A lot of my sensors aren't wireless anyway. Some of them are. Most of them aren't. And uh, instead of having my sensors go to this thing directly, they go through the alarm panel and secondarily into Home Assistant. That's another way to do it, and that is a more reliable way because there are less wireless components in it. But with the appropriate firmware, I was surprised how reliable this was. I'm Wendellis Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums, especially if you have any questions.